What is the best kind of protagonist? Everyone has their favorite, but nothing is more hype than a nice, chill character that has no problem absolutely ruining someone's day. And this goes beyond characters like, say, Luffy or Natsu, who are good guys but will fight for their friends. I'm talking about borderline villains. Characters who are good guys, but deep down are brutal. I'm talking about characters like Yusuke, Yuji, and recently, Chihiro from Kagurabachi. But why do we like these characters so much? Why is this kind of character always so popular? And what makes them different from your typical protagonist like Goku or Luffy? Well, the big difference and the reason we always like this kind of character is because they represent the best kind of friend we all want to have. So to explain what I mean, let's take a close look at those three characters I've mentioned and analyze what makes them so special. To start, let's look at everyone's favorite, Yusuke. And I call him everyone's favorite because if you were old enough to watch Toonami back in the day, then you were definitely staying up to watch episodes of Yu Yu Hakusho. And when you did, you were immediately drawn to its unique main character. See, Yusuke is far from your typical shonen protagonist. Typically, the main character is shown to be a good guy right away, but not Yusuke. When you start Yu Yu Hakusho, Yusuke is skipping school, he talks back to teachers, he's beating up kids from other schools, beating up kids from his school, and then when he dies, they pretty much come right out and say Yusuke was gonna go to hell. So yeah, not exactly your typical good boy protagonist. Except, there is a silver lining. Throughout the whole introduction to Yusuke, there's always the bottom line that deep down he really is a good kid. He messes around in school, but in his defense, most of the teachers have it out for him and don't make it a secret. The kids he fights with are usually the ones to start the fight because Yusuke has this reputation of being a tough guy. And despite the fact that he is a punk, he is a good friend to Keiko and Kurabara, and he does look after his mother the best he can. And of course, before he dies, Yusuke pushes a kid out of the street that was about to get hit by a car. Well, actually the kid was gonna be fine, but that only proves the point. Regardless of whether the kid would have been hurt, Yusuke's gut instinct was to put himself in harm's way so that this kid would be just fine. Quite literally the definition of selflessness. That's why Yusuke is basically a good kid, which only becomes clearer as the story goes on. But despite that, Yusuke is also a punk, and in some ways that never really goes away. So then, why would anyone like Yusuke? Why did we all stay up so we could see Yusuke on Toonami? Well, as I'm sure you know, the answer is actually pretty simple. But before I explain why that is, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. Now, like I was saying, the reason everyone likes Yusuke is because he's a character that is refreshingly genuine. For example, later in the story when Yusuke meets Kurama and hears his story, everyone else is wary of Kurama because, oh, he's a demon thief. But Yusuke can kind of tell that Kurama is basically a good guy. So when Kurama tries to sacrifice himself, Yusuke helps him out so that they can both survive and still save Kurama's mom. And if you place yourself in Kurama shoes, Yusuke had no reason to do this. The only reason he did it is because he knew Kurama was a good guy, and he knew that his mom would be lost without him, just like he saw with his own mother. So if you're Kurama, you've just made a lifelong friend. And that right there is precisely why we love Yusuke. Because he might be a punk, but deep down everyone knows that Yusuke is the best kind of friend. He's the friend that you can always count on and doesn't try to play games or be something that he's not. He has this reputation of being a punk, but when push comes to shove, he'll always do the right thing. So with Yusuke, you get this special kind of archetype. A character that doesn't try to be good or look good, but is genuinely a good dude. Now, when I put it like this, it's easy to confuse Yusuke with your more typical protagonists like, say, Gon from Hunter x Hunter. But keep in mind that it's this delinquent aspect of Yusuke's character that makes him special. To understand why that is, let's take a look at Yuji, a character who's sort of on the other end of this spectrum. Because Yusuke has it pretty rough when we meet him, and he's shown to be kind of a bad kid. But Yuji is almost completely different. When we meet Yuji, he is the good boy. He's not a punk, he goes to school, has friends, even does extracurricular activities. 
In fact, we see that Yuji is clearly much stronger than everyone, but chooses not to use that strength over others for some kind of personal gain. So he is as pure of a character as you can get, clearly different from Yusuke, and yet there's a strong connection. It's not so much where these characters start out, but rather where they both end up. Because once Yuji's grandfather passes away, he goes from wanting to mess around his whole life to wanting to help people. So when he joins the sorcerers and fights cursed spirits, he tries to understand them and even help them if he can. But then he meets Mahito, and Mahito pushes him to the edge. And that's when Yuji loses it. Then the story progresses and Mahito kills even more of Yuji's friends. And as a result, he pushes Yuji past his limit, turning Yuji into a menacing character. Which on on paper sounds an awful lot like Gon's character arc in Chimera Ant, but the two arcs are completely different. Gon just wants to get revenge and becomes obsessed with it, even threatening his friends. Yuji isn't like this at all. As a result of his struggles, Yuji weirdly becomes even more rational. His speech to Mahito about being a hunter can be seen as a bit of a character flaw in that he has a warped sense of himself. But despite that, what you take away from this scene is that Yuji doesn't just consider his own values. Yuji is a character that considers the big picture. He considers his role in the world in the context of everyone else's. And if you happen to be caught up on the manga, then you know that this is a big part of his character. And yet, despite that, he will still mess you up. So on the one hand, Yuji seems pretty different from Yusuke. Yusuke starts out as a punk, but turns out to be a good kid. Yuji is already a good kid, but slowly turns into this menacing badass. But remember, it's not so much the arcs that make them similar. It's the trope that they share. Namely, that they are both characters that can be absolutely ruthless, but are still genuinely good people. And the reason they feel so genuine is because these characters are both good people despite their rough backgrounds. Yusuke has a reputation that haunts him and still chooses to be selfless. Yuji has every reason to lose his mind like Gon, and yet chooses to keep his cool and see the big picture. Both both characters choose to do the right thing despite their struggles, and that is why they are so sincere. They're the kind of friend that comes off as rough, but you know they're cool because you can tell they've been through a lot, and despite that, they're still good dudes. And it's this exact character trope that has made Chihiro from Kagurabachi one of the most increasingly popular characters in Shonen Jump. Because when Kagurabachi first came out, it was all for the memes. The whole reason people read it in the beginning was purely for the memes. But over the course of the last year, people have stuck around and the consensus is that Kagurabachi is a seriously good story. And this is largely thanks to the role that Chihiro plays. In a lot of ways, Kagurabachi feels a lot like Demon Slayer. They both have swords, they both have magic. Most importantly, the two main characters have some similarities. Chihiro, like Tanjiro, acts as a big brother to a lot of other characters. He is a nurturing person who does whatever he can to save people, as we see when he absorbs Sojo's lightning attack so that none of the surrounding civilians get hurt. Which is why I thought it was pretty funny when people got upset when Chihiro decided to join the Kamunabi, or the magic police essentially. Because it's kind of typical that fans want Chihiro to be this super edgy vigilante type character when that's never really been his thing. And yet, I can definitely see where people are coming from. In the very first chapter of the story, when Chihiro and Shiba go down to confront the Yakuza, Chihiro says that he'd like to negotiate with them before they turn to violence. But as soon as he sees the dead bodies, he totally flips. He walks into their base and murders every single one of them. And then in another scene, Shiba asks why Chihiro doesn't heal the scar on his face. And Chihiro delivers what might be the single edgiest line in all of anime when he says that he keeps the scar so he can be reminded of his hatred every time he looks in the mirror. Like dude, that might as well be on every t-shirt at Hot Topic. So on the one hand, Chihiro is a rational character. As a matter of fact, he is easily the most rational character out of this trio. And yet he's also the most menacing, as he's ready to murder an entire gang at a moment's notice. But the key here is that this hatred of his is always based in love. He only gets angry like this whenever he sees injustice. The whole reason he wants revenge is because he loved his father so much. He only fights the Yakuza because of what they did. More often, Chihiro is a gentle, nurturing character. 
For example, when he meets Char and she says that she doesn't have any parents, the very next thing he asks is if she's had anything to eat. Quite literally the definition of big brother energy. And then later when they're attacked by bad guys, it's only when Char asks to be saved that we get this iconic scene where Chihiro simply says, you got it, and immediately begins to mess them up. And that's the key. Chihiro isn't doing this for himself because he's pissed off at the world. He's on this revenge mission for his father, and he only fights for the sake of other people. So with Chihiro, we're getting a new take on this exciting character trope. With Yusuke, you get the kid from school who gets into fights, but you know he's good people. With Yuji, he can be absolutely terrifying, but he's still a good dude and manages to keep his cool. With Chihiro, he can be a cold stone killer, but he's also the most nurturing character in the story even after watching the murder of his father. The reason we love these kinds of characters is because on the one hand they know how to throw hands, but on the other hand they choose to be good people and choose to do the right thing even though they have every reason to be pissed off at everyone. They remind us of the best kind of friend. The kind of friend who you know has had rough times but is still a good person and you know you can count on. It sets them apart from a lot of other protagonists and makes them some of the best characters in all of manga. But now I'd like to hear what you think. How would you define this character trope? How does it compare to other tropes in manga? Share your thoughts and see what everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it on my community tab as comment of the week. And if you'd like another discussion like this one, then check out my video on power systems. In that video, I explain what separates good power systems from great power systems. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.